Welcome back to another amazing video from Ape Recaps. Today we will recap a horror slash thriller film called Hostel from 2005. The movie is about three friends who are traveling across Europe when they meet a man who convinces them to visit a hostel with no idea of the hell that awaits them. But before we begin, beware of the spoilers. Watch out and take care. And I hope you enjoy the video. The film opens with American backpackers Paxton, Josh, and Icelander Ole who are in Europe and they are staying in a hostel. They decide to go out for the night and party in a club. One of them bumps into a woman and gets in trouble when the girl's boyfriend comes. The boyfriend has all three of the friends kicked out of the club. The trio decides that it's very late and that they should get back to the hostel. But a strip club catches Ole's attention and he suggests that all three of them go inside and have some fun. The rest also agree to go to the strip club, but when they come back to the hostel, it's closed. The backpackers try to open the gates, but due to a curfew, no one lets them inside. Everyone gets so disturbed at this time that they even start to throw things at them. But a man named Alex calls them inside his apartment, and they go because they have nowhere else to go. There is a couple having intercourse in Alex's apartment, and they don't seem to mind the presence of three random men. And the loving couple even lets Ole watch them. Josh and Paxton start talking to Alex. They talk about how they will leave and go to Barcelona after some time. Alex shows them a picture of him sleeping with many women at the same time. All three of them get very excited about the photo and ask Alex where they can go to experience the same thing. He tells them about a Slovakia hostel filled with American-loving local women. The backpackers board a train to Slovakia, where they meet a Dutch businessman long enough to be unnerved by his bizarre behavior. Upon arriving in a small village, the backpackers check into the local hostel and find themselves sharing a room with Natalia and Svetlana, two attractive single women who entice the backpackers to a spa where the women await nude in a sauna. They invite the men to a disco that night while dancing and drinking with them for a few hours. Josh himself is uneasy about hooking up with either of them since he'd recently gone through a bad breakup. He leaves the club for a few minutes and is suddenly accosted by a small group of kids who demand gum and candy. The Dutch businessman appears and gives the kids money and sharply orders them to leave. Josh is grateful and offers to buy him a drink in the club. Later, Natalia and Svetlana take Josh and Paxton back to their room and have sex with them. The next morning, Ole seems to be missing. A young Japanese backpacker named Kana reports that her friend Yuki has has also disappeared. An MMS photo sent from Yuki's phone shows Yuki and Ole beneath a smokestack of an abandoned factory with the word Sayonara written beneath it. Unbeknownst to Josh and Paxton, Ole has been decapitated and Yuki tortured and presumably killed by a strange hulking man taking the picture and sending it with Ole's phone. Paxton and Josh decide to leave Bratislava with Kana the following day. They spot a man wearing Ole's jacket walking nearby and follow him to a museum of medieval torture relics. Paxton later notices that in the MMS photo of Ole, Yuki and the smokestack are faked. Later that night, while partying with Natalia and Svetlana, Paxton and Josh succumb to the effects of alcohol. Josh stumbles back to the hostel and is put in his bed by the female concierge. After a few seconds, an unidentified person enters the room. Paxton passes out in the disco's storage room, mistaking it for the men's room. Hours later, Josh Josh wakes up handcuffed to a chair in a dungeon-like room surrounded by power tools and weapons. The Dutch businessman enters in a leather apron and gloves and begins torturing Josh, drilling him in his pecs just above his nipples and several spots in his thighs despite Josh's screams of pain and his begging to be let go. After he is done, the Dutch businessman sits down and talks to Josh, explaining his unfulfilled dreams of being a surgeon due to his trembling hands. Josh begs to be released. The businessman then cuts Josh's Achilles tendon. Josh tries to walk and collapses. His torturer lets him crawl towards the door before finally grabbing him, dragging him before a scummy mirror and slashing his throat with a scalpel. Across town, Paxton awakens and returns to the hostel to find both Josh and Kana missing. In his room are a different pair of beautiful women inviting him to a spa, eerily similar to Natalia's and Svetlana's offer from before. When the local police chief proves unhelpful, Paxton locates Natalia and Svetlana at an obscure bar and demands to be taken to an art show where he thinks his friends are. They drive to a factory on the outskirts of town. 
Natalia's demeanor has changed from friendly to aloof and unsociable. She mocks him a bit for being an American tourist. She leads him inside and down an eerie corridor where, in a dirty cell-like room, Paxton sees the Dutch businessman cutting up Josh's dead body. Horrified, he berates Natalia, who laughs at him, telling him they pay her to lure tourists to the factory. He is ambushed by thugs who drag him past cells filled with other backpackers being tortured by various clients. Paxton is taken to his own cell and handcuffed to a chair Chair. Joined minutes later by a German client who tortures him, first using a gardening claw and then pointing a gun at him to frighten him. Distracted by Paxton's ability to plead for his life in German, the client calls in one of the factory's hulking guards to put a ball gag in Pax's mouth and tries to kill him with a chainsaw. But before he can begin, Paxton starts vomiting, either out of fear or because the gag was choking him. Due to his ball gag, he starts to choke on his own vomit, and the client quickly removes the ball gag, probably to stop Paxton dying before he can kill him. He then approaches Pax again with the chainsaw, but inadvertently saws off Paxton's ring and pinky finger before slipping on the ball gag which he threw on the floor. The client drops the chainsaw on his own leg and severs it. With his fingers severed, Paxton is able to slip his hand from the cuff, grabs the client's pistol, and shoots the man dead. When the guard comes to check on the situation, Paxton, having returned to his original sitting position and appearing unconscious, shoots and kills the guard. He grabs his fingers, disguises himself with a torturer's apron, and dons a metal mask before slipping out into the corridor. He hides in a nearby room to avoid capture from other guards, where he finds a collection of victims. He hides under a pile of body parts on a cart before he is taken to a room where he sees dead bodies being chopped up by a hulking silent butcher. One of the corpses is Josh's. The butcher also loots the victims for valuables and piles the body parts into a tray to toss them into a large cremation oven. Paxton kills the butcher with a hammer and escapes to the surface where he then peers outside to see police officers conspiring with the factory men. Paxton slips into a locker room and dresses himself in the clothes of a client, pulling a glove over his mutilated hand and discovers a business card for elite hunting, now revealed as a secret worldwide murder for profit organization that charges ascending rates for Slovakians, Europeans, and most of all for Americans, who carry a fee of $25,000 for the opportunity to torture them. A somewhat crazed American businessman arrives and believing Paxton to be another client, discusses his intended victim and asks Paxton whether to kill her quickly or slowly. Paxton advises administering a quick death, but the American businessman disagrees and decides to resort to torturing her, leaving behind a no longer needed firearm before exiting. Paxton steals the pistol and escapes to the courtyard where he hears a woman scream. Unable to ignore it, he returns to the factory and kills the American, now in the middle of mutilating Kana's face and preparing to burn her with a blowtorch. Kana's right eye is hanging out of her injured face. Paxton cuts it off, and they run outside. Paxton and Kana steal a car and head to the railway station, spotting Alexei, Natalia, and Svetlana on their way from the original hostel. Paxton vengefully runs them over, killing Svetlana and Alexei. Natalia survives the initial collision, but is run over by Pax and Kana's pursuers. Pax sees the gang of kids and notices that he is in the same car that he was driven in to the art show, which has a bag of candy in it. The gang then kills the people chasing Paxton, having been bribed with a bag of candy. At the railway station, Kana notices the disfigured reflection of her missing eye and her tortured face, and, unable to live with her hideous scars, throws herself into the path of an oncoming train, distracting the guards and allowing Paxton to escape aboard another train. Once aboard, Paxton hears the familiar voice of Josh's torturer, the Dutch businessman. As the train stops in Vienna, Austria, Paxton slyly follows him to a public restroom and throws the elite hunting card under his stall. When the Dutch businessman reaches down to pick it up, Paxton grabs his hand and, using a scalpel, cuts off the same fingers he lost during his escape. He then breaks into the stall and nearly drowns the Dutch businessman in the toilet bowl, allowing time for him to recognize Paxton before slitting his throat, killing him. Paxton then leaves to board another train out of Austria. Here, this movie ends. To watch many more exciting recaps like this, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Let us know in the comments section about your favorite movie that you would like us to recap next. Thanks again for watching, stay safe and healthy.